Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. We're now a couple months into the 2023 boa breeding season, and that gets us to the end of the first phase of boa breeding. Today, I'm gonna to give you guys a brief update on how my pairings are doing so far, give you the latest as far as what I'm doing to hopefully produce lots of awesome boas this year. I'm also gonna show you some of my specific breeders and give a little bit of a forecast of how they're doing so far and how it looks uh, for possible babies sometime this spring or summer or even fall. So be sure to stay tuned for that. And so right now, this is the second week of January and this is the point where I end the first phase. And if you've been following the channel, I started off my breeding back in November, early November. I started cycling my animals by dropping the temperature just at night. And for the animals I cycled, I dropped the temperature a total of 12 degrees Fahrenheit just at night from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. This guy is a little frisky today. And um, this started in early November. By mid-November, I had completed the dropping. I kind of cycle it down slowly, three degrees at a time. I, I kept this up until the beginning of January, and then I started to reverse the cycling and increase the temperatures. And at this point, we're back to the normal temperature, so there's no nighttime temperature drop. Uh, the animals have been together now for about two months. I start pairing up um, you know, as I'm dropping the temperatures. And this year I did a little differently. I didn't actually drop the temperatures on all my animals. I cycled about two thirds of them. About a third of them I didn't cycle. You know, I'm curious to see if the cycling even makes a difference, you know, because we know that there can be some negative consequences of cycling. Sometimes animals will develop respiratory infections if you drop the temperatures. And this, I was very conservative this year. I only dropped 12 degrees just at night. So I haven't seen any evidence of respiratory infections among those animals where I dropped the temperature. But I decided for all my morph boas, like this VPI boa, uh, albino VPI T positive albino, I didn't drop the temperatures at all because I've heard a lot of morph breeders don't cycle and it works just fine. And then some of my other animals, including some of my true red tails, I didn't cycle. I just kept the temperatures the same. And honestly, I saw no, no reduction in breeding activity. In fact, the animals that I didn't cycle, they went right at it as soon as I paired them up. So this is, um, you know, I, I've, I've been skeptical about cycling and I've, you know, talked about this in the past in other videos. And this confirms what I believe that cycling in many cases isn't necessary. Uh, well, I just have to see how successful I am as far as actual babies with the animals I didn't cycle. Overall, things look pretty good so far. I've seen quite a bit of evidence of breeding activity. I would say probably about 75% of my pairs or trios, I do see some clear signs of breeding activity. Doesn't mean I'm gonna be successful, but it's certainly a good sign. And the animals, now that they've been together for two months, what I'm gonna do now is separate them out into their individual enclosures. I'm gonna go ahead and feed them, and then they're gonna be separate for about a week and then I'll pair them up again. Uh, they'll stay together for about a month or so, and then I'll separate them, feed them, and repeat the process. And typically I do this um, until about April, May, even June in some cases, or the females are obviously gravid. And you know, in most cases I get about, I don't know, about two thirds to 80% or so of animals that are obviously gravid. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see how successful I am this year. And so this is actually an animal that I have paired up. This is a uh, six-year-old VPIT positive albino male. And this guy is just a gorgeous animal. VPI is one of my favorite uh, morph genes. And it looks so nice just as a single gene. This guy doesn't have any other genes other than the VPIT positive. It's one of my favorite um, morphs with, that's just caused by one single gene. You know, this guy is so beautiful, I don't see a need to you know, add any other genes. It's just a great single gene morph. But of course, you can do other genes. And actually, I got this guy paired up with a VPIT positive Junglo or Jungle Sunglo. So the female has VPIT positive Jungle as well as Hypo. And so this guy actually, I paired him up last year for the first time. 
and he didn't show a lot of activity last year. I had him paired up with a um, Hypo Jungle Moran to try to make some um, Moran hat VPIs. And I didn't see much activity at all. And then the female became gravid, so there must have been something going on. Unfortunately, she delivered a premature litter that was largely slugs, a few underdeveloped embryos. Uh, not exactly sure what happened. This year, he actually looks a lot more interested in my VPI junglo female, and I've seen a lot of signs of activity. So maybe this guy just needed a year to warm up, and maybe he'll, he'll reach his uh, stride as a breeder this year. We'll just have to see. But I'm you know, hopeful that I'll have some VPI T-positive junglos and jungle albinos and you know, straight VPI T-positives, etc. cetera, uh, you know, sometime this spring or early summer. Uh, we'll just have to see. I haven't bred too many morph boas. This is only my second year breeding them, but I'm hopeful that this guy can, you know, contribute his genes to my VPI projects. Here's another animal that's on his second year of breeding, and hopefully the second year will be successful for him. This is a Max Pink Bloodline Argentine boa. This guy is about four and a half years old. And last year, not quite sure what happened. He looked like he was interested, but unfortunately he didn't get the job done. But hopeful this year that this will be his year. Uh, these guys, this guy's certainly been interested in the female. And you know, anytime I look at the enclosure, he's on top of her with his tail wrapped around hers. And you know, obviously trying to mate with her. So hopefully he'll be successful. Hopefully he's already impregnated her. We'll just have to wait and see. I see a lot of times people will put photos up online of uh, you know a pairing and they, they say it's a lock or something like that and the tails are wrapped together. And although that's certainly a good sign, unfortunately that doesn't mean that you're gonna have baby boas. In fact, most of the time when the tails are lined up like that, there's no actual copulation going on. The male's just trying to position his tail to make it happen. But sometimes there is, and normally you don't see it because the animals are kind of wrapped up together. And obviously the last thing you want to do is disturb them. So I'm pretty hands off. I put my boas together. I check on them, you know, every few days, but rarely do I ever disturb them. I'm never going to check to, you know, see if they're actually copulated or not. You know, you got to just let them do their thing. And they, you know, these animals need privacy. They're not going to breed and, you know, behave in their natural manner if you're constantly checking on them. You know, so although it's great to see these, you know, these uh, lockups, so to speak, where the tails are intertwined, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get babies. And then conversely, often I'll see absolutely no signs of any activity. Uh, and But yet the female becomes gravid and I have a nice litter of babies. So some of the males are just stealth breeders. They just don't want to be seen doing this. And, you know, somehow they know when you're going to be around and they can, you know, do their business in private and never allow you to actually witness it. Next, we have another male who hasn't been successful in the past, but I'm really hopeful that this year will be the year for him. This is a Amarala, a Bolivian boa. This is from the Orange Crush bloodline. And this guy is actually, this is actually the third year I paired him up. Unfortunately, I just have one pair of these Amarala, one male, one female. So I can't really vary it much and try different animals. But this year, I'm really hopeful. You know, it looks like the male is really interested in the female this year. In previous years, he didn't seem nearly as interested. Seems like every time I look in his enclosure, he's you know on top on the back of the female, and his tail is wrapped around hers. So, really hopeful. Um, again, I just as I just mentioned, just because you see these lockups and these you know tails intertwined, doesn't necessarily mean that there's been any copulation, or that you're going to get baby boas. But you know at least it's a step in the right direction. You know sometimes I'll pair up a pair of boas and. The male's sitting on one side of the cage, the female's on the other. It's kind of hard for them to make baby boas without even touching each other. You know, but as long as I see them kind of intertwined and the tails are wrapped around each other, it at least makes me hopeful. So just got to give them their space to do their thing and hopefully make the baby boas. And this particular project I'm really hopeful for because this is the last of the subspecies of boa that I have 
that have not bred from yet. Based on the previous classification of boa constrictor before it was split into three separate species, you know, there were something like eight or nine subspecies, of which I had six in my collection, and I bred five of them, uh, which are constrictor, imperator, longicata, sabogae, and occidentalis, with the amorali being the last subspecies that I have yet to breed. So, would be really uh, happy if this pair bred for me, be, you know, something I could cross off my bucket list, but we'll just have to see if it happens or not. Uh, and if, you know, 2023 is the lucky year for these Orange Crush Amorali. We've seen three males, so I thought I'd show you one of my breeding females. And this is a Suriname red tail, which Surinams are really the bread and butter of my breeding operation here. And I have several pairs of Surinams this year, so hopefully we should have another good year in 2023. This particular female is a Prometheus bloodline animal. This is her first year breeding. She was born in 2016, so she's now about six and a half years old. Just real beautiful animal, love the pattern on this one. This particular female um, was, grew a little bit slower than some of her litter mates, which is why I didn't pair her up until this year. And I actually have her paired to another Prometheus bloodline male. You know, both of them have Prometheus as their father. So the resulting babies will be like 50% Prometheus, you know, as though Prometheus was their father. Prometheus, unfortunately, isn't with us any longer. But so far looks so good that the male is a proven breeder. If you look at the female, she's looking a little dingy. You can see all these little marks and stains towards her tail, you know, which is a good sign. I'm not going to get any more explicit than that. But uh, I'm pretty hopeful that the male is getting the job done. And we're going to have some really beautiful 50% Prometheus uh, Suriname true red tails on the ground. We'll just have to wait and see. But uh, real nice Suriname and these guys have been one of my key projects here at Brian Boas is producing these beautiful top shelf Suriname true red tails. Next we have another first time breeder. This is a male Hog Island boa from the Sears bloodline. This guy was born here in 2018 and was growing him up as a breeder. This is his first attempt. And I had produced Hog Island boas every year for like three years early on. And then it seems like my male just lost interest or he lost fertility or something because the male, the original male, the father of this guy, just hasn't produced any uh, babies in the last couple of years. But I'm hopeful that this guy will get the job done. And so far he looks really interested in the female who's much larger than him. And so I'm hopeful that he'll be able to, you know, produce some babies successfully. But this guy is a pure Sears bloodline animal. The parents of this guy came from Vin Russo. And he looks a little dingy now, but uh, he's got really beautiful colors, lots of pinks and greens. I think he might be going into shed. But you know, when they're going through breeding, they just look dingier overall. Um, you know, they're doing a lot of like physical activity and the males are constantly courting the females. So sometimes their skin gets a little bit, not dinged up, but it just looks kind of dull. And you know, often you can see some little stains or marks from the semen that uh, sometimes goes, you know, places where it wasn't intended to go. But uh, it's positive signs that something's going on. But this guy seems to be really busy courting the female. So hopeful that he'll get the job done. Um, it would be great to produce some hog island boas since it's been a few years since I've had them. And these guys have become super popular lately and just really, really hard to find, especially these pure Sears bloodline hog island boas. Thought I'd show you one more morph breeder. And this female is another first time breeder. This is a Hypomoran boa. She is a uh, 2017 baby, so she's about, uh, what that, six years old now. And pretty big girl, you know, somewhat uh, unwieldy to handle, not the most tame animal. I guess she's about seven feet long, probably, I don't know, 25 pounds or so. Giving me a little bit of a workout holding her up like this. But I got her paired up with my um, Jungle Moran male. And the Jungle Moran is proven. He bred to my other, my Jungle Moran female last year. And the idea is I'm interested in the producing the Super Moran. Uh, she's, you know, not the most handleable snake. Not really, really aggressive, just a little insecure. 
But the Super Moran is a really cool looking animal. Um, if you don't know, Moran is a incomplete dominant form of pastel. She's also got hypo. The Super Moran has this beautiful intense red color. And I did produce one Super Moran in 2023, or 2022 rather, who was doing really well. I held her back. I'll have to share with her with you in the upcoming video. But hopeful to have some more of the Super Morans, as well as the other combo morphs with Hypo, Jungle, and Moran. Uh, these are three great genes to work with. They're all incomplete dominant. And, um, you know, a good place to start if you're getting into a morph breeding project. Uh, Moran has not been worked with all that much for whatever reason, even though the gene's been around for quite a while. But I think it's a really underrated uh, morph gene that can add a lot of color and beauty to any morph project. So hopefully this um, Hypo Moran jungle female is on her way to her first litter. One more animal for today's video. This is another male who uh, is a type of boa I haven't bred before. It seems like a, a theme of today's video. This is a North Brazilian red tail boa. This is uh, a male produced by Vin Russo from the Lemke bloodline. And I haven't been successful with my North Brazilians. I have another pair that I've tried in the past and struck out on. This year I'm trying these uh, Lemke bloodline animals for the first time. Uh, so far so good, but you know, who knows? With breeding boas, it's unfortunately never all that straightforward, especially with the true red tails. This guy, he's a little wild, a lot calmer than he was as a baby. This guy was really hissy as a baby and always struck at me. But now he allows me to handle him, you know, not the most calm or docile animal, but not at all aggressive either, just not too hard to handle. But it would be great to have some of these North Brazilian boas. It's one of the only true red tails I have that I haven't produced yet. Um, I don't know why it eluded me in the past. I have a, um, a pair that I got from basically boas, which unfortunately hasn't bred for me. But hopefully we'll be lucky or successful this year with these Lemke bloodline North Brazilians that came from Vin Russo. And so there's still quite a bit of time left in the breeding season. At the earliest, I would anticipate that I'm going to have grabbed females around March. That's usually when they start showing signs. Um, I might have an early litter. You know, last year I actually had a litter at the end of March, which was kind of a uh, surprise. I didn't think she was going to give birth that early with one of my Pearl Island boas. But typically, I start to have litters around May, uh, June and July are pretty busy. Typically, I have the, the Boa Imperator uh, localities first, uh, which peak around July. And then August is probably the peak for my true red tails, actually going into September. Um, so quite a bit of time ahead, but we're pretty well into the breeding season, so it's not quite the beginning anymore. Um, and so far, it looks like a good year, but we'll just have to see. And of course, I'll be bringing you regular updates on the success of these different projects. So be sure to stay tuned to the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.